Welcome to another episode of Dynamic Thriving Podcast. I am your host, Marianne Pack, spiritual guide into all things life transformational. And mm -hmm. today I am so pleased to present to you my special friend and colleague, uh, Ashley Woods. So Ashley, I am so glad you're here with me today. Thank you. Excited to be here. Absolutely. I love that you're here. I love the topic and we're going to get to that in just a minute. Yeah. And um, Ashley and I met through Darla Ledoux through Sourced Experience. So mm -hmm. I want to um, tell you that Darla is got amazing transformational programs that you may want to look into. Mm -hmm. um, also, this podcast is in collaboration with Ladies Power Lunch. And it's a free Facebook group, and um, you can find it under Ladies Power Lunch under groups on Facebook. And we have one rule that we intentionally support one another. And if mm, you ladies yeah. have a desire to be supported in your business, in your life, in your finances, in whatever way you can imagine support, it will be in this group. Mm -hmm. You can also visit their website, ladiespowerlunch.com. So we're going to awesome. jump right in, Ashley, and ask, who is Ashley and what good do you bring into the world? Yeah, that's a great place to start. Yeah. Um, the who is Ashley piece feels more complicated, but I'm, I'm a retreat leader and a transformational coach. Um, I would say the good I what I bring naturally that I don't have to put a lot of effort into, it's just sort of who I am and what I bring uh, is enthusiasm. Yes. <laughs> and um, curiosity and joy. Oh, I yeah. love that. Yeah, I, I, I just, it's part of how I'm wired and how I was born and I can't help it. <laughs> I just... <laughs> just part of who I am. I love that. I love that. <laughs> and curiosity. Oh my goodness. That just calls in more life. And then mm -hmm. our whole purpose of being here, because I always tell people our purpose in this life is to experience as much joy as possible. So mm -hmm. I am a joy advocate for sure. Yeah. Definitely. So, yes. Um, being a retreat leader and a transformational coach and, and, um, how has that developed for you? How, what do you, how did that come about that, that you decided mm. to? Yeah. Well, I would say I sort of stumbled into transformational work 15 mm. years ago when I was really dealing with some tough things in my, in my relationship. I was married at the time and um, we were just kind of at an impasse. And I had a friend who had taken some, you know, weekend workshop kind of program and said, go do this thing. And I really felt like I had nothing, everything and nothing to lose. Um, it was a bit of desperation maybe that had, that brought me there. And, um, that weekend changed my life, just absolutely changed my life. So I, I remember walking out the Sunday night and I felt like I felt lighter on my, I physically felt lighter on my feet. I felt this sense of openness and possibility about what could be. And yeah, I was kind of hooked from the get go. I just said, I, I don't, whatever this is and whatever's happening, I want more of it in my life. And so that, that set me on the path and I've really been actively engaged in doing this kind of inner work for myself and leading it or facilitating it in some capacity for a long time now. And leading retreats is like the best thing I can think to do just personally. That's my, um, the, I feel really fortunate in the work that I do is truly chosen and designed. Like I answered the question, if I could do anything, what would I do? And this is it. And, you know, I feel really like privileged in one sense that life has been, that has, has gone such a way that I've really been able to do that and devote a lot of my life and my energy and my resources to this. Um, but yeah, I, I had a vision 
come to me and I could see it all played out. And I thought, man, if I could do anything, I would facilitate experiences that transform and liberate people. And I would do it in beautiful places around the world. Like that's the best. And that's what I do. Awesome. I like that. (laughs) <laughs> and I love our topic because it is dare to disappoint. Mm. Hearing what others think keeps you playing small. Mm-hmm. Dare to disappoint. I love that. This is a real mm, active topic in my life. <laughs> mm. of coming out, feeling like I'm coming out with being able to talk about religious trauma and right. thriving on the other side. Yeah. I held that part back because yep. I didn't want to disappoint. Yeah. Didn't want to disappoint the last of my family that when I see it, my friends who, mm-hmm. you know, I don't do most yeah. of my friends are gone, but, and, and I worked through that, but boy, that's hard to think about disappointing people because you love them you care about them but you know, so <laughs> let's let's so hard <laughs> let's in in relation to daring to disappoint you know do you help your clients deal with that I mean moving into um transformation the problem yeah. that you solve for your yeah. client that, that you help solve yeah sure um well, so many things are popping up as you're saying that. Um, yeah, first, like really acknowledging you and what it takes to speak up and share something so personal and intimate in a, in a circumstance where you know it's likely to cause some riff or rock the boat, so to speak. Mm-hmm. And it takes courage. And that's just all there is to it. And I feel like that's one of the primary things that I help clients with is finding the courage to embody and express their truth in the world. Yes. And, you know, I, I have a fundamental belief and all my work is really founded on this, this belief that there's a life that it wants to live through you. It, it wants to be expressed through you. And It's not necessarily some career choice you're going to make or some particular role you're going to play, but it is an expression that is yours and yours alone. You know, it's just being as Marianne as Marianne can be. That's your, that's your purpose. And when we can get our head out of the way and we can really trust our heart and what's coming through, that's the quickest path to this really deeply satisfying um, self-expression in the world. And so I work with people who have a desire for that kind of authenticity and self-expression and truth telling in their life. And they're just afraid and they're dealing with what we all deal with when it comes to being ourselves and putting ourselves out there and really taking chances to have the kinds of things we want in life. Um, It's not, I always kind of jokingly say like, it's not for the faint of heart. Yes. And, and it's really not so, yeah. but it's always when, when you start on this path, you start feeling that empowerment, you feel that surge of life force, uh, you know, so yeah. that gives you the strength to take the next courageous step to That's right. open up vulnerable mm-hmm. you know, vulnerability and to show your authenticity. Um, so it's not like you're just out there on the raw and ragged edge trying to bang (laughs) through it. It's not that there's a strength that comes just like you said, when you went on the retreat, you felt light in your body. Mm -hmm. You were lighthearted. There was a lightness about you. And that's that inner strength that you receive. Yeah. So I feel like we forward. Yeah, we, um, we liberate that energy. Yes. You know, I think there's so much of what we don't say. There's so much truth inside of us that we're not necessarily saying or living or expressing. And to keep that truth under takes a certain level of energy and intention. Oh, absolutely. 
And so when we have the courage and we speak the truth, it's like everything that it's taken to hold that under gets liberated. And there's this new wellspring of life force or energy, like you said, I mean, the whole, the old, um, you know, is a scripture or whatever the, the truth set you free. Like there's a lot to be said for that sense of freedom that comes when we just start telling the truth. Yes. And we don't have to remember what we said because <laughs> it's, it's coming out of us. You know, it's not like, Oh no, I have to remember what story I told this time, you know? Oh, it's, it's, <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. The truth. That's is, right. It's, it's what you're living. <laughs> yeah. It's just coming out of you. It's just, yeah. I, I love thinking that, you know, it's a flow. We don't. Um... So how is your approach different? I know coaches, you know, approaches are, are, are so different and we have so many coaches on this show. So yeah. I just want to ask a little bit about what, you know, in your approach, mm -hmm. what's like unique about it? What's truly Ashley? Mm. Well, it's deeply experiential. Mm. Um, I feel pretty strongly about information and knowing more things and how powerful that can be at times to have information and knowledge. But at the end of the day, there's a lot of stuff that we all know that makes absolutely no difference for us. Um, and I feel that information or things that you know, but you can't actually live are just food for your ego. And ultimately, I think they cause us more pain you know, to know that something is possible or we could do it this way, but to not actually be doing it yeah. is really painful. Yes, yes. And so it's really experiential um, and embodied. I'm interested in people having a direct experience, like an undeniable experience of who they are at their true nature in a way that like rearranges the cells in their body, right? Yes. That has them standing differently, walking differently. So we do a lot of body practices. There's a big somatic element in everything that I do. It's like, where, how do you feel that in your body? What's the shape that it takes? We move with it. We use a free movement dance practice. Um, that's incredibly powerful and very central to a lot of the work I do. So I, I would say that that translating your possibility into an embodied expression is at the heart of how I work. I like that. Explain somatics for people in case they just don't under, don't quite understand that word. Yeah. Um, I would say it's like increasing body awareness and tapping into the inherent wisdom that the body holds. So when we're looking for truth or how we feel about something, uh, it can be really easy to go to the head and what we think about it. And then we can have an experience of whatever emotions might come up. Those are our feelings. And then we've got this very distinct sensation that arises. And I think, um, you know, the head and the emotions get a lot of attention more so. And we're not always as attuned to the subtle energy field of our body and all that it's communicating with yeah. us and to us. And um, I think it's a really powerful instrument that we can use to find our true north. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I like to call my body my partner. Mm. Because, you know, if, if you have a partner, you're going to have a relationship with them. You're going to know them. You're going to sense them. Yeah. You're going to... Mm, feel the subtle nuances and that's mm -hmm. all that's all part of mm -hmm. like you said the wisdom of our body because our body yeah. knows yes and our yes. body's experiencing everything that we're thinking and feeling and and um and i i know because i lived in ultra high vigilance hyper vigilance mm -hmm. stress for years in, in my past with the trauma that I've dealt with. 
you know, and to come out the other side and be at peace and joy and, you know, uh, allowing mm -hmm. that authentic side of me shine mm -hmm. has just been um, so healing. Yes. That's the well-being in my body alone. Yeah. That's I'm right. Living in that stress. That's right. Yeah. Your body's always in response to what's happening in your mental thinking, feeling loop, right? The body's the body's present to all of it. And so we can process a lot through the body without needing to understand it or tell a story about it, even yes. just to be present with it. Um, which I think is a really, also a very powerful way. And then using it in, in just simple, simple ways as well. Like I'm, I'm present to the fact we keep saying, I keep saying like truth and express the truth. And sometimes maybe that can, maybe people hear that and think, like something major that we've been holding, like we need to come out in some way, like you said. But I really think it's these tiny truths that add up to the quality of our life. Absolutely. And it's all the little things that we step over. And you can start to feel that in your body when your body gets really calibrated to a sense of ease and integrity and relaxation or whatever, that when something feels off, it's like a little kink in a hose. And it just feels like, ooh, something doesn't add up here. And it can be something simple. Like I just need to say, oh, when you, when you said that, I, I notice I feel kind of sad, like mm -hmm. it hurts my feelings a little bit. Can we talk about it? Right. It could be something simple like that. Very good. Yes. Yes. I like, yeah, it's not some huge dynamic truth that, you know, it might be. It, but it, it might not be, yeah. but, but there's all those little guys underlying. That's right. That's right. And those are the subtleties of uh, living the big T truth of our life. That's right. I think they're in support of that. Um, yeah, agreed. So I always say our mess is our message. So what was your mess? <laughs> yeah, that, great that brought you to doing this kind of work. Yeah. Um, I definitely think that I had a very direct experience of the impact of not speaking up. Yes. You know, I basically, oh, gives me, and I want, I see it happen all the time with people. There's such a tremendous cost or a price that we pay when we're holding things under, holding things in, we're not speaking up. And I basically watched it destroy my marriage. Mm. Yeah. And I was just petrified to say in it. I mean, it, not, it could be simple things like, I don't want to do that. Or I really want to take this trip. And I'm afraid that my wanting to do that is going to upset you. Like it, it, whatever, like just mm -hmm. being able to say, my own experience in a really vulnerable, just transparent way. I, I can have a lot of compassion for myself. You know, I was young and inexperienced and doing the best I could and it's all good. And it was painful mm -hmm. and it, it, it caused, um, it just caused trouble where there, where there didn't need to be it had, I had more courage. So I really think that gave me the, incentive to just live a truer life put my cards on the table and see where the see where they fall yeah. yeah I can so relate to that you know not being able to speak up speak your own truth because I developed thyroid disease twice ah uh, yeah and that metaphysically is my yeah. patient because I was taught that women's voices don't matter. That's right. That we were to be silent, that we were to be <laughs> in submission, that we were, your yeah. desires and needs are not important. So, you know, coming out in practicing, trying to speak up for myself now and, mm -hmm. you know, and, and on topic, daring to disappoint because it could be disappointing anybody. That's Just, right. Like you said, even asking for some, something you wanted. Mm -hmm. And afraid that it would disappoint the other person or not, not be what they wanted. And um, I know it's taken me years to just start asking for what I want. Just something simple as, can we go out for lunch? 
Yeah. Yeah. And it might take me days to actually ask. Mm. You no, know, in, in thinking of, of how it should be, it should be as simple as, you know, hey, let's go mm. out for lunch. I mm. feel like lunch today. Yeah. You know, whatever. Um, yeah. And yet it's always I'm projecting that I might disappoint somebody. That's it, right. That, that wasn't what they intended to do that to me. And I might interfere with their. <laughs> Design. That's right. You don't want to be, you don't want to be a burden. You don't want to be too much trouble. You know, for me, I, I, I never wanted to ask, there was always this underlying fear. If I ask too much, they'll go away. And, but here's the thing, you know, you ask me, what, what do I bring? Look, I, my mom would describe me as a child as having a zest for life. Mm -hmm. I, I want to do all the things mm -hmm. I love living and I love, right. So there's a place where I've tried. There was a point where I tried really hard to kind of keep that under control because I do want a lot mm -hmm. and I, I want a lot from life. I want a lot from my relationships. I want a lot in my career. Um, and so I would try to keep that down in some sense as so as to not drive people away or be be a problem or be inconvenient or be selfish right like I, I did the martyr thing for a long time just trying real hard not to be selfish and um yeah it's taken me years but there's this, this place where I am at this point in my life where it's like I ask a lot that's just who I am and it's gonna be worth it <laughs> but it's just but that's just how it, and, and it can be, I love that you said, I want to go to lunch. Can we go to lunch? Cause it's a practical on the court daily example. And for one person that might be a super easy, no problem thing. And their version of that is going to look different, but we all have those places, um, where we hold back in order to avoid disappointing or rejection or separation or whatever we might anticipate. And um, I think it's worthy work to look at that and be willing to move beyond it. So can you just touch on real quick what, if we're, you know, not wanting to disappoint mm -hmm. and it's making, and it's holding us in that small place, Mm -hmm. what, what is a little bit of the process of coming out the other side and actually mm. daring to disappoint? Yeah. Yeah. That's How great. do we allow ourselves to do that? <laughs> yeah. Um, so it's not exactly fun. Maybe yep. <laughs> let's just say, let's start there. But I, I really think the, the catalyst is telling the truth about what it's costing you to not. And that really is your doorway. And I think that we ignore the impact and we rationalize why it's a good idea. You know, I didn't ask to go to lunch because he was really busy or, um, well, we just went two days ago and I shouldn't want to go again. And then we justify not speaking up or asking for whatever it is so that we can stay in this safe little place mm -hmm. and and it's reasonable and makes sense to our mind so that's as far as we go but we don't look and see like the fact that maybe there's a tiny bit of resentment building inside mm -hmm. of me towards this person mm -hmm. right Ooh, maybe i'm not being the version of myself i want to be but i'm blaming them for it and so when you start to tell the truth, like, oh, this is costing me the things I actually want in my life. This is costing me connection with my partner. This is costing me a sense of like relaxation and ease in my body. It's draining my energy. We start to tell the truth about the, the impact. We get more willing to do something about it. I so love that you bring up the cost of it. Mm -hmm. it's really costing us that's right because we don't we don't think about that it's, it's sort of like you just numb that part of you yeah you know so that you can survive it and that's, that's right. all this that's right You're but then it starts to yeah it starts to create 
it, it, um, I like to think about it like the space between us. So if you and I are in a relationship and there are things that I'm experiencing that I'm not sharing with you, they start to muddy the water. Yes. They start to get in between us. Mm-hmm. And, and then we wonder why it's hard to connect or why when I'm with you, part of me actually wants to just numb out on my phone or why, why it's actually hard to be present with you. Well, it's all that shit you're not saying. Yes. It's a buildup of all that stuff. And we think that by not saying it, we're keeping some sort of peace. And what we don't really acknowledge is that we're slowly killing our relationship by muddying the water and stepping over all this stuff. Yes. Yeah. And the thing is, again, you know, I'm so sensitive to, to those kinds of things that I know affect our well-being, mm-hmm. our health of our bodies, because right. we start developing that resentment or we develop that, well, I can't tell them this, you know, for fear of this or this okay. repercussion or, you know, so yep. when we're carrying all of that negative energy i wrote a blog post one time you know about my uh yeah exactly my throat the thyroid yeah yeah um it was um it was talking about uh, um oh, now i just lost it okay well <laughs> <laughs> it'll come back <laughs> <Yeah. Steve. laughs> at any rate just just mm-hmm. knowing that we carry that negativity oh that's what it was negativity in my body that i mm-hmm. had these there's negative thoughts and feelings and my body was listening. That's right. And it responded in kind. It said, if you're going to complain, if you're going to feel negative, guess what? We want you to feel more of it because Mm -hmm. here it is. So to free yourself, to dare to disappoint, Mm. because you might be just surprised that it was like, I would love to do that. You know, Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's because right. They are looking to help you live your highest good too. Yeah. If they're already, if they're in a relationship with you and it's a sourced relationship, they're looking to help you find what you want in life. Yeah. They want to be that, that yeah. helper. Well, and at the end of the day, we don't get to control how other people feel. Oh, absolutely. Not none it's of our business. That- Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's such an illusion to think that we can. And then it starts to get manipulative. And again, the energy between us gets weird. Yes. So the responsibility I feel strongly is like the responsibility we have in relationship with friends, family, partners, whatever, is to be bringing all of ourselves to the table and taking responsibility for our experience. Yes. And sharing my experience with you so that you know where I am and how I'm feeling and what I'm thinking so that we can really connect. But I can't control what you do with that. And do you think sometimes, Ashley, when when people start expressing, you know, start expressing their needs or wants or desires, whatever, Mm -hmm. um, that it actually might open up that seed of giving the other person permission to do the same? Oh, absolutely. I totally think so. Like it's, yeah, I'm, I definitely think that it works that way. It's like responsibility begets responsibility and vulnerability begets vulnerability. And by being that we provide a space in which that is welcome. And yes, the people around us get to be more fully in their truth as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I love that because that expands and grows. Mm-hmm. And that makes such a difference in the world. That ripple effect goes out there and gives people permission, you know, yep. don't wear your, because I was one who wore my feelings on my sleeve and mm-hmm. everything offended me. Everything was, you know, years ago, yeah. that mindset, that martyr, you know, victim mindset um, when I couldn't speak up. So then I would get mad if somebody else spoke up. That's right. I've been there too. (laughs) And tell me what you want when I can't bring myself to telling you what I want. Yes. That's such a great insight. Yes. I've done that myself. It's easier to judge you for being bold than to take responsibility that I'm being, you know, tiptoeing around. 
That's yeah. right. Yes, I always called it yeah, that walking on eggshells. Oh my goodness, I have to be careful how I say it, when I say it, where I say it. You know, so uh, they take it just right because again, I mean, <laughs> all that my perception of thinking I'm controlling that. Yep. <laughs> it's really none of my business. I just need to be who I am, be happy with it. You know, you're not telling, you're not expressing your desires and wants in a shitty way. You know, yeah. it's still from a loving sourced yeah. way of, you know, you don't. Yeah, I think that's an important yeah. yeah piece. It's not like permission to be an asshole. Like it's we're not crazy. talking about this is my truth. Let me dump it on you. Uh, that, that, no, ultimately we're talking about responsibility. Yes, yes, yes. So it's, it's laced with love and <laughs> yes. responsibility, yes. compassion. Yeah. So how can people work with you? How can people find you? Yeah, um, I would love that. I am on Facebook as Wild Hearted. That's the name of my retreats and my business. So if you look for Wild Hearted, you'll find my page there. Um, my website is ashleywoods.com. Mm -hmm. um, I have a very particular process that I invite people into if they're curious about working with me in any capacity. Ooh. And I invite them into... A, an experience called spark your wild. And, uh, it's an embodiment experience that helps illuminate the edges and the barriers that you're currently experiencing to embodying and expressing your truth in the world. So that's the first step for anybody interested is to go on a spark your wild experience with me. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. awesome. You did mention, um, uh, a ditch doubt course to me. Or yes, 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 yes. I have give us a little insight on that just real quick. Sure. I have a great little mini course called ditch doubt. It's five days to more confidence. And, um, yes, for your listeners here, if they go to the link and put in the coupon code thrive, they can access the course for free. Um, but it walks you through practical exercises that you can do to build your confidence. Oh, so okay. it's, it's activities that a daily activity that you can engage in mm -hmm. that will naturally help build some momentum and confidence for yourself. It's a good place to start. Yes. Yeah. All of these links, uh, will be in the show notes. So you don't have to worry about taking notes. Um, you'll be able to find them all there. And, um, do you have any final words of wisdom you'd like to share with us before we close out this episode? Mm. Um, I would say that if you've been listening, as we've talked about what, about speaking your truth or the things you're not saying and something pinged for you, mm. like, oh, that thing I'm not saying, mm -hmm. I would really invite you to muster the courage and say what you need to say. Be, be brave with your life. I love that. Be brave with your life. I love it. I love it. Thank you, Ashley, so much for joining us. Thank you I for so having me. I so appreciate you and I appreciate your work. And, and um, thank you, listeners, for joining us today. That has been our pleasure and yes. joy to come together and present valuable information for you and that it is for your transformation. Mm. you can take away some nuggets of gold and uh, integrate them into your life and uh, be sure and contact Ashley I'll have the the her links in the show notes and um, again thank you for listening be sure that you like comment and subscribe as this helps my work go into the world and bring more joy and as mm. always you're invited to uh, visit my website maryannpack.com for all of our services. I have a new offering coming up that I'm working on. It is a coaching concierge consultation. So if you are looking for a coach and it sounds like a bunch of voices out there on the internet um, and coming across your feed, your news feed, know that you have support and mm. I can help you find the perfect coach for this time in your life. And um, 
and take out all the stress, take out the time and energy and money outlay, um, and we'll find you um, some options, some coaching options, and then you get to decide who mm -hmm. would be perfect for you at this time. So again, thank you so much. Thank you, Ashley. Thank you very much, Marianne. I really appreciate you. I appreciate you all. Love you all. And remember, you are joy looking for a way to express.